Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. When my guest from Australia first started in healing, about every fifth person was healed. After seven years, often every person is healed. He wants to teach you how to have the same results. We call it raw outback power. Next on It's Supernatural. I'm, I'm here with John Miller from Australia. I've, I've seen him on the internet, and uh, uh, he, he was praying for me last night. And I'll tell you, that is a tangible power that's coming out of you. Tell me, just kind of whet our appetite, tell me one recent miracle. Well, well just last week, I was doing a healing seminar, and when I do seminars, I do, I do um, demonstration. And, and a, a man there for five years struggled on a walking stick. His, his legs were numb. He, he worked in an iron foundry. A 600 pound lump of metal hit him on the side. It tore all the muscles and nerves. And he was on, uh, he had had a, had a, had a machine that pumped um, painkillers uh, right. morphing into him. And, and that could not even begin to dull the pain. And for five years he struggled, like, a, like an old man, a young man. And then I called Jesus. up to demonstrate yeah. healing, laid hands on the name of Jesus. The power got touched me, fell down, and then he got up. How do you feel, mate? There's no more pain. And he I'm ran. Healed. He ran. In fact, he, I, I'll tell you, John. I felt that raw outback power, but go ahead. And he ran out the door and I called that, watch, watch out for the bears. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's out in the country. But you say every believer should be able to walk in that raw outback power. Um, uh, I, uh, but uh, 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 this is ridiculous. How old is your grandson? Well, I've got a, one, one grandson. I've got quite a few grandchildren. He's nine now. Tell me about the nine-year-old. Okay. And by the way, if the nine-year-old can do this, guess what? <laughs> okay, I've got one grandson, Bo Mellor. He's, uh, he's had a healing ministry, ministry for 18 months. <laughs> and, it, and it happened, I came to my son's church and I was ministering, and he sat there in the front row watching his granddad do all now? the miracles. Yes, I can hear. I can hear. And oh, after I left, God, he decided to hold healing meetings. And, uh, and I hadn't laid hands on him, but in his heart he, he said he wanted to be, he wants to be like me. He and so he began to, to round up the neighborhood children, began to ha and pre preach the gospel, he lay hands, and they're getting healed. And so he prays for people at his school, uh, he prays for adults, no prays for children. To the Father except through me. And they told him the school, you've got to stop praying for these children. This is not a Christian school. And my grandson said, said they have a right to hear the word of God. <laughs> now, that's his, that's his grandson. Tell me about how old was your father when he started in ministry? Okay, well, my dad was 69. He was a drunken, alcoholic, aggressive man, anti-Christ. He had an amazing encounter with Christ. He got born again, filled with the Spirit, and he began his first healing ministry, going out knocking on doors. He first began to ask all the neighbors who hated him to forgive him. He started a Bible study. He rounded up all the unsaved neighbors, and, and he'd have them in his home. Here's their son that they hated. He asked them to forgive them, and he, he began to minister to them. He began his ministry at 69, and in those days, I didn't believe in healing, and he began to mentor me in healing. You, you know, you told me uh, before we went on the air that your father was one angry man. Very angry. Uh, he, he, he would say horrible things to you as you grew up. He, he would literally, unbeknownst to him, he was cursing or cursing. All the time. You're, you're, uh, so, and he was an alcoholic, and then your mom had severe mental problems. Yeah. And you had to live in homes, uh, and you were in a motorcycle gang, yeah. and you got into a horrific accident, and two bikers saw your accident that were strong, they were part of a Christian bike club. Yeah. They follow you to the hospital. What happened? Well, what happened is they came into the casualty, casualty as they were sewing me up. And one of them said, he said, you know, God loves you and has a plan for your life. 
and I got home out of the hospital, I couldn't stop thinking that Jesus loves me and has a plan for my life. So I'm, I'm lying in bed one, one night and I had a lot of depression and mental Jesus torment. And one night I just cried out. I said, Jesus, if you're real, set me free, help me, forgive me. And this forgive presence me. came in the room. I fell asleep. I woke up in the morning. I felt this amazing peace. I looked out the window, I could see how green the leaves were. I could see that I could hear the birds singing. I thought, what's the strange sensation? Then I realized it must have been my prayer. Jesus must have come to me and said, since that day, my life has never, ever, ever been the same. That's our God. I pray that he become your God because he already is. You just have to know that. Uh, now, uh, you were preaching to everything living, but you, uh, didn't know a thing about miracles. So you go to a people group, and as I understand it, you don't even know their language, the Aboriginal. Yes. Uh, and how many people came to your first meeting? Well, what happened is I, is, is, I, is I worked as a missionary amongst the tribal Aboriginal people of the Northern Territory. I was based in the town of Catherine, and I had an outreach at a place called Binjari, this, this, this Aboriginal Jesus reservational loves. community. And I had one old lady, and I had three Jesus or four children. That's all I had loves. for five months. And my church Jesus was just a field. I sit on the log, they sit on the ground. I share Bible, simple Bible stories and I share about Jesus. And then, then, I, then I became so desperate, I began to fast and pray uh, 10 days a month from the first to the 10th. But but the thing is, I wasn't praying for healing for them. I was praying for them to find Christ. But after five months, one day I was there preaching, preaching out in the grass there. And I had, I, and this old lady always limped. And I had this compassion to pray for her. You know, I'd never seen anybody healed. I laid hands on her leg and I thought nothing more of it. I wasn't really expecting God to do anything. And the next week I went there, there was a crowd. I thought, why are they here? I found out the old lady was healed. And, and, then, they, and then, of course, they wanted me to pray for them. God healed them. And then they called me the missionary man who, healed, who heals. And so my brain was confused because I didn't really believe that God would do this today. And, the, and, and you know, despite me, despite me, God moved. <laughs> You also bumped into witch doctors, demon possessed oh, dogs. Oh, yeah. Demon possessed dogs? Yeah, we'll see, we'll see out there amongst the Aboriginal community, they had the Gadachi men or witch doctors, and they put trumpet curses on us. In fact, I'd, I'd go to have meetings in these, in these remote areas, and the witch doctors would come out, and they'd come out and attack the people, and they'd punch them. In fact, they had these, uh, they called them camp dogs, and the dogs are demon possessed. And, uh, and, and every time you pray for people or mention the blood of Jesus, they go rabid and wild and attack you. And so, so, so so when I had to pray for the people, I had to have a, what I call a camp dog stick. And when I was praying, I had to hit the dogs, and the, and the dogs would be- This is not your average church. <laughs> oh. And so the, dog, the, the dogs they have their, had their jaws around my ankles, and I'm praying, and I'm bashing that. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, guys are coming in and, and punching the people in the team, getting the microphones and hitting them over the head. It was wait, wild. Wait, well, I'll tell you what, he had to pray <laughs> and fast because there is a level of reality mm -hmm. that is dark mm -hmm. and evil, and he was in it. And if he didn't pray and fast, I don't think I'd be talking to nah. him today. But then he goes to Scotland and major miracles break out. And, and then all the secular press is actually interviewing him about the miracles because they went through a skeptic saying they came back as believers. Be right back. <laughs> we will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, these great miracles started breaking out around among the Aboriginal people, but then you go to Scotland. Yeah. That's where you really saw it break That's right. out. What happened? What happened in Scotland is that as it began, I went to a small church in the slums of t about 11 to 12 people. And no, the, you go from the witch doctors to the slums. Yes. And, I, 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 what a ministry. And the, and the place was so dangerous, the police wouldn't go into this area. And, uh, and the pastor had his cars torched twice. They had knives. And they t it's, to fret, it's, to, it's to beat up the people from what, the church. Weren't you afraid? I wasn't afraid. I see why God has entrusted you with this great anointing. What, what did you see in, in Scotland? Well, what I saw in Scotland was outstanding miracles. I began going down the street and preaching from the street corners and the bus stops and crying out to people to come to Jesus. And, and then, a, then a, a, the first small group came of about 12 people. Jesus and one lady didn't have an wallet. eardrum. From, from five years of age, and she was in the late 50s. She had no balance, she had chronic pain, mm -hmm. she had all, and, but, and, I, I, and God hear. amazingly healed her. I can hear. She went back to the surgeons, I examined her, God grew an eardrum. I told you, it's a miracle. After half a century. I hear everything you're saying. And what happened this? This lady could never swim. She couldn't go in the aeroplane. She could never get a driver's license. After the miracle, she got a driver's license. She could go in an aeroplane. She could swim, do everything. Yeah. Create a miracle. I, I would imagine that you had more people than you could contain trying to come to your meetings. It's amazing. People came from all around the world, all around Europe. In fact, the newspapers did major stories, the biggest newspapers. It made front headlines of papers. Tell me a miracle that they wrote about that they liked. The first miracle, I came back to Australia, and once again, a reporter came to expose me. He's sitting with a camera, waiting to see I was a fraud. A lady had, had MS, was disabled. They, they, they helped to the front, she couldn't move her toes, she had numb legs, chronic pain. They helped her to the front. After prayer, power God touched her and, and she could walk. Her toes could move. And this reporter put front headlines, major paper, I saw a miracle. Wow. Second media. And, and now, sometimes people pump the press to get them to do things. What did you do to get such front page coverage? Pray and fast. <laughs> <laughs> no press agent? It's, it's, it's no press agent. People would ask me, who's your press agent? I said, oh, I said, I don't have anyone but Jesus. I, I, I wonder, most people after you pray, if nothing happened, would go into unbelief. Yeah. And many times we see people come that might be healed the first time. First time in Scotland, the lady came from Belfast in a wheelchair, disabled, couldn't walk for nine years. She came to three meetings. Each meeting, I said, you come next time, we'll keep believing for you. The fourth meeting, she got to the wheelchair and walked. Still, still healed today. One time, you asked God, how are all these great miracles happening? And you had a vision. Yeah, well, well uh, one time in Scotland, we just saw the past went from having a handful of people to church overflowing. People couldn't get in the door. Miracles go. Newspapers coming and reporting the miracles, different newspapers. And what happened was that uh, um, one time I was, they brought a lady that she couldn't walk, they carried her in. Her hands were like claws, her feet were clawed up. She had chronic pain, nerve pain, arthritis. She, she was from about eight years disabled. And they, they had to carry her in and they sat her on a chair. And, uh, and, and as I laid hands on her, I just touched her hands, and it's just same as a, as, a, as a rosebud would open when the sun comes up, you know, her hands just unfurled. Her legs unfurled. All the pain, and she walked normally, totally healed. And so, and so the next day, I was sitting in the church. I told the pastor, I'm tired. Just have a normal service. I'm sitting there and I'm asking God, God, how did that happen last night? I remember, how did, how, what happened? You know, I don't always ask God, but how did that happen? And, you know, I don't always get visions, but then God showed me such a clear vision of the night before. I'm standing there. They bring the lady up. They carried her up. Hands all, all like claws. Her feet are clawed up. And, and then I, I saw in the vision, as I reached over and touched her, 
then I saw Jesus next to me, and as my hands reached out, his hand moved with mine. I thought, he's, it's so real. It's so real. We don't always see the spirit world, but if, you, if we knew how close he is, and you know, we are the hands. Okay, but, the people, people, but wait, people look at you and they say, okay, he's got it. What do you say to them? Well, you know what? I don't have it, but I have Jesus. Yeah. I don't have it. And you know what? And the people who know me would know that can't be John Mellor. <laughs> it's got to be. It's Jesus. It's, 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 you know what? It's by, I found this, Sid. Well, one thing I learned amongst Aborigines, it's simple, childlike faith. So, it's so simple, it's difficult. People often overanalyze. Oh, people out there, I want to tell you, you, you often, you often overanalyze everything. It's so simple, it's easy. It's so, so simple. Bible says, lay hands on the sick. They sit, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. It's not complex, it, it's simple. I, you know what, when we come back, and this is what I love about this guy, he makes it so simple, but that's the way. Look, did Jesus <laughs> say, become like a little child? Yes. We'll be right back. He's going to pray for us. <laughs> Right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get John Miller's book, Keys to Healing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Healing in Jesus' Name. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9592. When you read John's book, Keys to Healing, you will receive the keys to access your own healing and you will be activated to minister healing to others in need, wherever and whenever you find them. Through this book, you will learn that it is God's will to heal you. Understand how to access the power of the cross and walk in victory over every adversity. Discover the keys to receive your healing. Find out how to identify the roots of sickness. Learn the keys on how to minister healing to others. Understand what to do if your healing doesn't happen. Discover how to avoid the deception of New Age healing, which leads to bondage and demonic influences. We have people all around the world who read the book Keys to Healing, and then they begin to pray for the sick, and they themselves begin to experience the same thing I see. They see people healed and miracles happen in their lives. You will also receive John and his wife Julie's three-part audio CD teaching, Healing in Jesus' Name. Through this teaching, you will be equipped to understand more about healing in Jesus' name, and you'll be encouraged that you too can be used by God to heal the sick. John also prays an impartation over you to receive your own healing and to receive the anointing to minister healing to others. On the CD, we actually have where I pray impartation prayer. They then go and pray for the sick and see miracles. And when I pray, they can receive that same power. I can't <laughs> wait for him to pray impartation for you, pray for your sicknesses. But even more important, he says, it's the revelation and the teaching that heals the sick. It's not a special person, it's a special message. Don't miss out on getting John Miller's brand new book, Keys to Healing, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching set, Healing in Jesus' Name. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9592. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9592 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So, John, if I was to say to you, what is the biggest reason for miracles? Answer that. Well, the biggest reason for miracles is very simple, is that Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus risen from the dead. The same Lord that walked this planet 2,000 years ago, He is here. He is alive. He is like, you want changes? Man changes, but He does not change. The same miracles from, from just the revelation, the same power of God has not changed. People change, but He never changes. That's why miracles are the same today. I want you to prove it. I want you to pray for people as God directs, even pray for an impartation yeah. of the anointing God's put upon you. Go ahead. Okay. 
Right now, I want to pray for you right now. The power of the Lord is present to heal. And right now, as I pray, people will be healed. Wherever you are, the power of God's present to set you free. I'm going to pray right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now that you are a healer. And Lord, let your healing power just flow right now. I command arthritis go right out. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus. All inflammation be healed now in Jesus' name. Blindness right now. I command eyes to be healed. I command blood vision to be healed right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. All eye problems be healed now. Sinus problems, allergy problems, allergy to wheat and dairy right now, pollen right now, be healed in Jesus' name. I decree healing for deafness. Deaf ears open right now, open right now. Headaches right now, migraines right now, depression, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia right now, bipolar right now. I break that right now. I decree total healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I break every generational curse. Freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, heal hearts right now. Heart fibrillation, heart problems. Heal the arteries right now. I declare creative miracles. Brand new hearts, brand new lungs. Every breathing problem right now. I break asthma right now. Emphysema right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer. I break cancer in Jesus' name. I command every tumor to shrink and disappear. Every cancer cell to die. Cancer to go in Jesus' name. Damaged knees, plantar fasciitis, painful feet, ankles, varicose veins right now, itchiness, psoriasis, and uh, eczema right now, all gut problems right now, all problems of, uh, of the ovaries. I decree uh, uh, normal menstrual cycles. I command fibroids to dissolve right now. I decree prostates to be healed. I break prostate cancer right now. Swollen prostates right now. Incontinence right now. Every stomach problem right now be healed. Every I decree a miracle in the livers right now, and in kidneys right now. Total healing, every organ of the body. Painful, damaged, elbows, tendonitis, couple tunnel. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I come against paralysis right now. I come against damaged spines right now. Every incurable disease right now. Lord, even, even diseases I haven't mentioned it, believe them for, I stand right now. I think of your anointing flowing out right now and healing people people and setting them free. I declare it right now in the wonderful name of Jesus and Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, moved by your power. Revive them. Stir them up right now in your wonderful name. Total healing. Restoration. Even our families who are listening right now, let the anointing flow into our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren, aunts and uncles, whatever city they are, whatever nation they are, let the same anointing flow from this place. I declare miracles in in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, right now, I, I declare, I, right now, I pray for impartation of healing right now. I pray for every person who's listening to this. God, I release that anointing on my life over their lives right now. Anointing just flow, Holy Spirit, just flow in your power over every person. Lord, let's saturate them right now. Move in their lives. When they lay hands on people, your power will flow. You, people will be delivered and set free by every disease and infirmity. In the name of Jesus, receive it right now. Like a little child, receive it right now. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.